One of the defining characters are what we usually think of a, a trait of animals that sets them aside, for example, plants or fungi, is the ability to move. Racing through life in an awesome display of speed, agility, and power, animals certainly seem to be in constant motion. Often, to rest is to invite attack. Animals sense the world around them and react, ceaselessly pushing, striking, sparring. But what did it take to bring this fast-paced drama to life? Off the rocky coast of Rhode Island, lies a watery world that may hold the answer. Costello is on the trail of an ancient mystery. If we could travel back hundreds of millions of years, he believes we would find the pioneers that introduced movement and behavior to the animal kingdom. But he doesn't need a time machine. In these cold, murky waters, Costello thinks he can find a creature very similar to those ancient trailblazers. In fact, his quarry is easily found, and just as easily overlooked. Although movement and behavior is quite complex in the animal kingdom, we really can see the roots of movement in a very simple or primitive group. This flower-like creature is an anemone, one of an ancient group of animals called cnidarians. How could such simple creatures have given rise to life's diverse ballet? At first glance, some cnidarians don't even look like animals. Cnidarians with their tentacles spread out, growing on the bottom, really don't look very different frequently from the algae that surround them. So, in fact, the early scientists classified them as plants. These organisms perplexed scientists for centuries. Early naturalists wondered, were they plants, animals, or something in between? The scientist to solve the mystery was a keen observer of the natural world, a Swiss naturalist named Abraham Trombley. Trombley lived in Holland during the 18th century. Working as a tutor, he introduced his students to the subtle wonders of nature. While investigating life in a pond, he stumbled on a tiny, green, plant-like organism. At first, Trombley thought they were mere tufts of grass. Then, to his astonishment, he observed something completely unexpected. He observed them moving. The first movement that I noticed was in their arms which bent and twisted slowly in all directions. Thinking that they were plants, I could scarcely imagine that this movement was their own. After weeks of painstaking observation, Trombley began to suspect that these were not plants after all, but animals. It was an audacious hypothesis in its day, but testing it was easy. Trombley offered his subjects food and noted their voracious attacks. I saw them digest animals as long and even longer than themselves. 
Thus, I had hardly any further reason to doubt that they were carnivorous animals. Trombley's discovery that Cnidarians were active, predatory animals was a revelation for 18th century science. In the centuries that followed, it would lead to even more profound conclusions about animal life. Today, Costello believes that the appearance of early Cnidarians was the pivotal event that triggered a revolution. They're certainly a critical group to study. In fact, they are quite important if you want to understand motion and behavior. Hundreds of millions of years ago, before animals swam the ocean's waters or scurried along the seafloor, only one group of animals existed. They were sponges. Unable to actively move on their own, they lacked all but the most rudimentary senses. Sponges filtered tiny food particles from the water by pumping the ocean through their bodies. They were simple, little more than a loose collection of cells. Then creatures far more complex sprang into being and changed the world forever. These were the first Cnidarians. <laughs> 